The Oregon Ducks, Dan Lanning, the new head coach, of course, they went over and hired the head coach away from Georgia, uh, the the former defensive coordinator at Georgia, who had the number one defense last year. Of course, Georgia losing a ton on defense. But you look at some of these numbers, they were number 26 in PPA per drive. They were number 83 in defensive PPA per drive allowed. Give you a PPA margin of number 44. So last year... Uh, not great. Like, remember, they stayed in the top six for a long time until late November when they got shellacked by Utah, but the numbers were never there. They they held on to that win over Ohio State in week two like it was gold for the longest time, and it was an interesting conundrum because obviously the numbers showed you that they were not a great team, even though they were stacking up wins against weak competition. You You had to have them go up against somebody decent and they went up against Utah, but they had that win over Ohio State. And the playoff committee did not know what to do with them whatsoever. Looking at their season win total, uh, they well, not win total, looking at their uh, season record, 10-4 and four last year, their postgame win expectancy was 9.74 and 3.26. So, very close to uh, to that 10-3. and three. They went 10-3 and three before the championship game, obviously. Uh, but yeah, they... Excuse me, ten and two before the championship game, so yeah, they that's about what they were supposed to be ten and three uh, between that and the championship game. Uh, this team returns sixty one percent of their production from last year, but I don't know that you would believe it if you just started going down the roster and looking. Uh, their roster strength is actually sitting at number eleven. I was slightly shocked at that. I know that they've got a stacked defense. Defensive roster strength, actually number six, uh, courtesy of our guys over at CFB Winning Edge. But uh, this was this was a little bit surprising. Um, the returning production, not great. Well, let's start off with the offense here. Let's start off with the offense. The new offensive coordinator, Kenny Dillingham, he was at Florida State. He was at Auburn. He was at uh, Memphis for a while. He has really worked with... He worked one season with Gus Malzahn, and the rest of the time he's been with Mike Norvell... But he did know Dan Lanning. Dan Lanning, of course, used to work at Memphis under Mike Norvell. Uh, he was at Alabama for a bit, went to Memphis, then went to Georgia, and developed into this uh, defensive coordinator guru, whatever. Uh, still really young guys. But don't forget, Bo Nix, of course, has a relationship with Kenny Dillingham from when he was at Auburn back in 2019. I expect that Bo Nix is going to be the starter based on spring game, based on all of the intel that I've heard out of Eugene. Uh I, I got to know who is going to be the skill position playmakers. Uh, maybe it's UCLA transfer Chase Coda. He's coming in. The offensive line is going to be strong, and I think that Bo Nix is going to have more protection at Oregon than he had even at Auburn, right? I, that on top of the fact that I don't know how many edge rushers you're going to be dealing with the likes of what you saw in the SEC when you're in the Pac-12. I think this is a bit of a downgrade in competition, for Bo Nix, which could certainly be a good thing for him in his last year as a college quarterback. Uh, on top of that, I mean, this team is going to benefit greatly, I think, from having a a new philosophy on offense, right? Dillingham is a young guy that is going to like to push the ball. He's going to be aggressive. Uh, this team only averaged 11 drives per game last year. That's eighth fewest. They only attempted 19 fourth downs. That was number 87 in the country. Uh, I would expect that we will see a massive change and you were not just going to be this rushing juggernaut, right? Last year, rushing success rate, they were number three in the country, but passing success rate, number 64. And a part of that is the fact that Anthony Brown was maybe better at designed runs than he was at throwing the football. Bo Nix, I think, can be both. Bo Nix, not great at designed runs, but he can certainly escape the pocket. I mean, you all saw what he did against LSU last year. Just absolutely absurd. Uh, so the offense is going to look a little bit different, and I think it'll be better. Uh, one thing that could change, they were number 18 in the country in turnover margin last year. You get aggressive, you start taking a few more risks, that turnover margin might change, might change a little bit. So we'll move on down to the defense. Uh, defense should uh, certainly be aggressive under Dan Lanning. You know, they've got the pieces to be able to do almost anything that they want to do. Uh, they are stacked even with losing Kayvon Thibodeau, of course, to the NFL Linebackers are going to be awesome, led by Noah Sewell, and uh, and Justin Flo was supposed to return this fall. Everything appears good with him after missing most of the spring. Um, they got five defensive linemen with 330-plus snaps that played last year. Secondary added transfer Christian Gonzalez to go with the cornerback Hill. 
and uh, and the safety Stevens the fourth. Uh, this, I mean, this defense is stacked, absolutely stacked. Uh, it, that first game against Georgia, those rosters are not that far off. They're really not. With what Georgia has coming in, these brand new faces and whatnot, I'm interested in what these two teams look like. Like, it, it, does Oregon come out intimidated right off the bat? Like, that line is 17 and a half. It's just ridiculous. Uh, the top players here, Bo Nix, Noah Sewell, Brandon Dorless, the defensive tackle, Chase Coda uh, from uh, of UCLA. I wanted to say USC so badly. Uh, Sam Tymaney, uh transfer in defensive lineman, and Christian Gonzalez, of course, the cornerback coming over from Colorado. They uh, they stacked up from the transfer portal. Did a pretty good job, like hit very specific areas of need, and I think it was very smart for them. Uh, as far as keys to the season here, Returning 9 of 12 regulars on the offensive line and defensive line, which is a great starting point. you got to make sure that you are strong in the trenches here. you got to figure out the running position after losing Die and Verdell. Uh, is it a new and improved Bo Nix? How does he come back from his injury last season? You know, uh, he was really good for Auburn before the injury. They they started out 6-2 and two last year. Or does he end up being sporadic? Is he not great uh, once he get it, uh, gets into game time, etc.? Uh, what do you end up doing with Ty Thompson? Like, is Ty Thompson going to end up starting before the end of the year? If that's the case, things have probably not gone well. On top of that, how different does this team look with Dan Lanning compared to Cristobal? Cristobal was very risk-averse. He was aggressive on defense, but as far as offense goes, he never wanted to take chances. Uh, this is this is going to be different, I think. I think Dillingham is going to be aggressive. And then you got to look into how is the defense going to change under Lanning, as opposed to what Cristobal was able to do there. Uh, my record prediction for them is 9-3. and three. So I've, I've got a loss to Georgia, uh, I've got a loss to Cal, and I've got a loss to Oregon State. Now, at the same time, like this team is talented enough, they should beat everybody on the schedule. Like I've got a win over BYU at Washington State, uh, Stanford, Arizona, UCLA, uh, Colorado, Washington, and Oregon State. Oh, I, I said uh, a loss to Oregon State. I've got a loss to Utah again. But would it shock me to see them win all these games? I, it wouldn't shock me if they beat Georgia in week one. Like Nothing would shock me about this, but Dan Lanning, of course, coming in as a first-time head coach, that is going to be a little bit tricky. So I do expect some losses and maybe some in spots that you wouldn't expect, like, for instance, going to Cal. So 9-3 and three is where I have the Oregon Ducks. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.